Okay, round our book club meetings. So if this is the first time you've been to one of our meetings, um, welcome. Uh, and if, if this, you've been to others, welcome. But this is an opportunity for us to just get together and talk about an interesting topic that uh, relates to our students. And I'm not necessarily going to give you any correction or feedback on your English. This really is more about um, just being able to discuss ideas, practice your English, um, have a sense of community around the pronunciation with pronunciation pro students. Um, there's just insight that you have and a voice that you have and opinions that you have that I love to hear. There's things for us to just learn from each other and grow uh, with, you know, with each other in this. And, um, and honestly, it gets me to read books <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when we have that accountability of knowing you need to not only read the book and come to a book club, but present a book at a book club, it gets you reading. So there's a little bit of selfishness in this for me. It gets me uh, reading books mm -hmm. that I think are important and, um, and helps me to um, share those ideas um, in a way that I think is helpful for our community here. All right. Okay, so, and you have the option of having your microphone on and your video on during this study group. So a lot of times being able to see each other helps um, help us kind of connect better as we're discussing. You're welcome to kind of jump in at any time. I don't have to call on you for you, you know, for you to participate here. Um, it's really more just imagine us in like a circle, you know, a circle meeting, not me just up at front teaching, but just in a circle. And hopefully we can lead a discussion this way. Um, but since, you know, since most of you, this is kind of a new topic, there, there will be a little bit of presenting the idea and then, you know, asking questions about that idea. Um, the reason that I chose this book, Braving the Wilderness, um, for, uh, for this group um, has a lot to do. I think this is a common issue with people in general, but I have found that in our um, Pronunciation Pro, within our community and with our students, um, there's this, this sense of like, where do I belong? You know, like what's, where do I truly belong? And um, this, this effort to kind of fit in versus belong somewhere. And what the, the premise of this book from Brene Brown is this quest for true belonging. Um, and the courage, you know, it talks to you here, the quest for true belonging and the courage to stand alone and kind of how do those relate to each other and how can we kind of have both, okay? Um, I've heard somewhere that you know, we want to belong to ourselves, but we want, also want to belong to others. And it's a human desire, it's an innate human desire for us to want to belong to ourselves, but also belong to others. And I think that just kind of gets to the heart of humanity, um, this, this concept of being true to ourselves, and, but, but truly belonging to others. Um, all right, so Brene Brown's interesting because she is a, she's like a, she's a social worker. She has a background in therapy and social work. She has a PhD and master's degree and all of this. She talks a lot about vulnerability and being able to be like truly our authentic self, which in our, in our world tends to not happen as much. You know, there's kind of this, you know, we put on a good image, we put on this ideal front um, especially with social media and things, but are we truly being our genuine, authentic self? Are we really showing up in the world authentically? And that's what I love about this community is there's a lot of vulnerability. There's a lot of authenticity because everyone is saying, okay, here, I'm here to grow. I'm here to learn. I'm here to, um, to par participate. Um, in a very vulnerable way. And so it brings out this, this connection. I feel like the, 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 most, the best connection that we have 
person to person is when we can be vulnerable and we can be truly ourselves and authentically ourselves. So that's really um, an important key to connection. So Brene Brown, she actually has a, she actually has a, um, a background in addiction. Like she, she herself, you know, really struggled with this concept of belonging and she, you know, trying to numb and mask with addiction and things through her early years. And then as she got into social work, um, well, it kind of drove her into social work because she was like, let me understand kind of these social dynamics and, and, um, that that she was struggling with herself so really an interesting background that she brings to the table in her in her own journey and she's very vulnerable and authentic herself whenever you listen to speeches about Brene Brown they're very they're very open and honest and and she's she's good at being her own unique self so let me just kind of does anybody have any kind of thoughts on that before we even dive in um, I have a question actually. Um, yeah. I find out that Braving is an acronym, right? Yeah. But I, I can't really remember the, the acronym. Yeah. So I actually, we're going to go through each of those acronyms today mm -hmm. and, and go okay. through each one and what they mean and, and things. So yeah, that's, that's right. She has Braving as an acronym that describe um, how to build trust with ourselves and others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good question. Okay, so she begins the book with this quote. Does anybody want to read this for me? Vadnai, do you want to read this for me? Here, you got to unmute your microphone. Let's see, are you, are you able to unmute yourself? There you yeah. go. You are only free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place no place at all the price is high the reward is great good okay and so this is from Maya Angelou who is um kind of a, a mentor of hers mm -hmm. and is any at, at first glance I know a lot of people a lot of you haven't read this book so at first glance what is what does this exactly mean to you or do you have any interpretation of this because for me it took a long time and actually for Brene Brown it took a while for her to really understand what this means but just at first go what is what is your first impression with this and you can just unmute yourself if you have some thoughts on that you should not have any bond. I would say that uh, you just need to Okay, okay go, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Ka uh, Kalyan, I think you had... Uh, I'm just yeah. saying that you should not be having any bonding to a particular place. If you have that, you don't, you don't have freedom to go around or something else. So okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. yeah, yeah. I like that. I like it. I like that's a good, that's a good uh, thought there. Okay, was it Amadou? Was, was it you that had some thoughts? Yes, uh, just basically, uh, it's a kind of simple interpretation. Just stand up for your values. And mm -hmm. uh, when you stand up for your values, it takes time. So um, it's a kind of connection with the video that uh, I've, I've watched. So yeah. Yeah. I okay. think it's uh, this, this, this kind of thing. Yeah, standing up with your values, being, being who you are, authentically who you are, and standing up for who you are. And when you do that, you know, then you both belong no place and everywhere. <laughs> and it's kind of this <laughs> dichotomy that she's, she's kind of talking about. So I think that the real, um, here, let me, uh, and actually, let me kind of pull this up. Sorry, I had, I had switched this around, but let me pull up this. Let me pull this up here. So there's there's this definition of true belonging that um, that she has, and with all of the, does anybody want to read this for me? Can can I read? Yeah. Okay. Uh, true belonging. Belonging is the innate human desire to be part of the something larger than us. Because this journey is so uh, primary, we often try to acquire it by finding and 
by seeking approval, which are not only hallowed substitutes for belonging, but often barriers to it. Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self acceptance. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so this, this belonging is an innate human desire. It's what we were kind of talking about that innate human desire to become, to be part of something larger than ourselves. And it's very primal. It's, you know, it's in us, it's in all of us. Um, and what we, we usually do here is we try acquire that by fitting in with people, trying to kind of fit in with a certain group or, yeah. and seeking approval by that group which are actually kind of barriers, are basically barriers to real true belonging. And if you've probably, if any of you have experienced that of just like, okay, I, I wanna belong somewhere, so I'm gonna start being like that group. <laughs> I wanna be a part of that group and I wanna be, you know, I wanna fit in with them. And so you start changing who you are so that you can be a part of that. But is that true belonging? That is, that's not, that's not going to, that's not real true belonging. So what they talk about, she's talking about for true belonging happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world, then, and, and, and also that, that sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. So self-acceptance becomes a huge part of true belonging. Okay, does anybody have thoughts on this? I think this is such like a profound and, and honestly, we could kind of wrap it up with this one quote, <laughs> you know, to me, this one quote really, you know, encompasses it all. But what, what stands out to you with this? Does anybody have some thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. uh, true belonging is uh, meaning that uh, to, to be part of a group, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to, to, to be part of your group, so how, how far could you go to belong uh, if it's not your values? I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah. But I think that to belong to a part of a group or something like that, I think that uh, it's not worth if, if it's against your values. Yes. Your value. Yeah. So, yeah. And so what they're really talking about is that we have to be true to our values. We have to have our own character and stand on our own secure foundation of who we are and have that self acceptance of who we are. If we really are going to belong to anywhere, mm -hmm. because if we keep shifting to whatever's around us, we're going to mm -hmm. always fall short because then we're at the mercy of whatever that group decides is the value or the character, you know, values or uh, that the group decides. Um, so it's an, it's an interesting concept. And I, you know, I bring it up with this group because, you know, it's probably not the whole group, um, but I have had people, uh, some students through the program who, um, as they, they go along in their program, they're trying to speak English clearer, or they're trying to get better in their accent, but then there's a level of, I have to, I have to have it so perfect that I, I fit in 100%. It's kind of this, I, I have to fit in 100%. I have to become exactly like the Americans to be accepted. And, and to me, I, I get a little, I get a little worried about that because I feel like there is a level of just being authentically ourselves and self-acceptance of ourselves instead of having to be 100% fitting in with the American crowd, I guess. <laughs> um, and I think that there's something to that, just that full acceptance, the way that we speak, the way that, you know, and there's obviously, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be teaching what I do without feeling the importance of clear communication and making sure that, you know, we're using the language effectively um, and that there's that, that commonality in language. 
But I think where it crosses the line sometimes is when we feel like the only way I can belong and truly belong is if I am 100%, sound 100% American and I 100%. Does anybody have any thoughts on that or maybe disagrees with me on that? What are your kind of um, feelings in terms of uh, like that feeling of belonging versus, you know, working on the language? So uh, I think that there's a problem if you think that the goal to learn the other uh, foreign languages try to be like the people who live in this country. Mm -hmm. I think the main goal when you try to learn a foreign language is to try to communicate with the other person, maybe learn about the, her culture, their culture. Mm -hmm. But if you try to um, lie to the, this person, it is a problem because you are where you born or where you are, mm -hmm. but it's different. I try to, when, when I'm trying to discourse, they make it better my English skill. I don't try to be like the American people. Mm -hmm. I just try to get a, some kinds of communication skills or tools to communicate with the other person. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, I think it's wrong is when you try, you try to uh, get uh, maybe the identity of the other country when you can um, spoke, speak, speak uh, your language. This okay. is different. I think it's different. This is a, a wrong thing. It's mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Does anybody have any other opinions about that? And that's what I, I like about this type of group is we can we can share and we have different opinions. And you know, if we have different opinions, that's okay. Uh, I'm what, not sure what, I, what I understand is actually no. so you're you're telling that well, even though we after finishing this course, we cannot we cannot be hundred percent become as a American accent right so that, that's what i and that's what i understood that's the right right when you come you come into this course what what our goal is is not to make you an american <laughs> our goal <laughs> is to make you the best version of you <laughs> but at least i should be expecting 50 percent right yeah you should expect it you know a big improvement based on the effort you put into it but am i going to change you into an american no <laughs> Am I going to, you know, change who you are at your core? No. You know, are we going to work on that skill set? Yes. Yes. But I think that the, the core of it is I think that sometimes people think if I speak exactly like this group, I'm going to be a part of that group. You know, I'm going to belong there. And there's a sense of belonging there. And if they don't achieve that 100%, then there's all this, always this feeling of disconnect. And I think that the core of it, and you can keep working and training to, to the point where people mistake you as an American, that's fine. But what I'm worried about more is that sense of your true self, that sense of self-acceptance of who you are and, and, and loving who you are right now, whether you sound like an American or not, truly loving who you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I think that's the idea. Victoria, did you have something to say? Hi. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, that um, about the languages, yeah. Uh, I, I was born in Russian, uh, in Russia, and I was uh, moved to, um, I moved to Israel when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And um, I know what is to know a language of, of the country where you are. So, uh, I know Hebrew as well as Russian. It's, yeah. uh, it's the same for me. The same, uh, but uh, I see a lot of people who repatriated from other countries and doesn't uh, 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 didn't uh, uh, learn Hebrew, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's difficult for them to understand the to their. I think that they feel. Um, in general, not so good as uh, they was feel they would feel if they were uh, 
a, a native Hebrew speaker speaking mm -hmm. speakers. So I think that language is a very important part. Maybe not one hundred percent, but if you can speak fluently, if you can connect, and if people don't think about your accent or about your, you can you you can. Uh, do what you want to do you can reach the a job you can uh, uh, feel like original uh, 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 like you you was born in this country it's much more easier than yeah. um, than uh, to feel uh, uh, to feel uh, another feeling that you are like yeah. uh, the second second uh, right. uh, part of <laughs> yeah sec second yeah. hand like that's that desire to belong you know and if you don't if you, you're not feeling like that that connection through the language yeah. then it kind of feels that it feels like a disconnect there yeah 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 interesting yeah i think that um i think that there is a strong connection between being able to fully communicate in a language and feel like everything that you're thinking you can say or any you know even and everything that you're feeling you can communicate with another person and that there's that connection that's made through language whereas if the language isn't as strong or it's not your first language or you know things like that then then the struggle is that that connection with others um and so you can divide it to the steps yeah the first step is to connect the second step is uh, to be understood the third step uh, step is uh, and go over so it's how about uh, it's um, in, uh, what do you want to feel like uh, yeah what what do you need if you need for a job or if, if you need to only for conversa conversation uh -huh. it's like uh, and I think that's where it varies so much is everybody's um, desire to speak the language is going to be different. If it's more a social piece, it's more of like, I need to, I feel like I belong here or I need to get a job or it's, you know, it's more functional because I yeah. just need a job or I need to communicate in my work. So I think there's varying levels that it, the language affects that yeah. sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So let's go ahead and um, let's just talk about the definition between fitting in and belonging. What is the difference between fitting in and belonging? What would you guys say? So as per my understanding, fitting in, we have to fit ourselves in such situation. Mm -hmm. And in case of belong, we have to belong ourselves for that situation. And we have to put ourselves and we have to accept the situation and do things according to that. Okay, so that's more fitting in. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, which one? Which one was the belonging? So do belonging again. Kind of what's your what's your thoughts on belonging? Belonging is something we have to belong that situation, mm -hmm. or we have to do something by making connection with that situation. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Uh, I think that the belonging is a uh, mean is when you, you are, it's you, it's your origin. Um, the feeling okay. is uh, when you can't accomplate. Okay. All right. Good. So in the, in the book, she had, she asked that to some high school students and they said belonging is being accepted for you fitting in is being accepted for being like everyone else <laughs> okay so belonging is just being able to be your true self and your every, people around you are okay with that versus fitting in is you're only accepted if you are like everyone else um someone else said if i get to be me i belong if i have to be like you i fit in all right. So what Brene Brown is trying to communicate here through through this sense of belonging is that 
we have to be our true authentic self. We have to be, you know, if I get to be me, then I belong. Okay. If I get to be my very true self, I don't have to adapt to what everybody else around me is. I get to be me. Um, and I'm going to be accepted for that. Yeah. So I, we have to be ourselves. Like we have to show ourselves as we yeah, are. Yeah. We have to be true to ourselves. You yeah. You don't need to as prove. Yeah. You don't need to prove something yeah. to other. You yeah. just, uh, as you just as you are. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to prove ourselves. We just are. And we love ourselves because we are. <laughs> that's who we are. You know, that's who we are. And that level of self-acceptance is important because we can't expect other people to accept who we are if we don't accept who we are, right? And right. we're okay with who we are. And so what she, she goes into is talking about standing alone. And I'll, I'm going to jump into... Um, Braving. Braving. So what she talks about, she has this acronym for how to, how to stand alone, basically how to be our true authentic self. <laughs> And a lot of that is living with character, you know, living with integrity, living in a way that you, your internal and your external are the same. So the way that you you believe your belief system match kind of how you live in the world and how you are with people. Um, so she talks about trust is a tool for the wilderness. And to be honest with you, as you, I was reading this book and thinking through this, there was a disconnect to me between what she was talking about true belonging and then what she gets into with braving um, and this, this concept of trust. And I, I had to like work on it for a while in my head to say, what is like, how is that connected exactly? Um, she talks about trust being kind of our tool, tools for the wilderness, our tools to be able to stand alone, to be able to accept ourselves. And, and so as I looked, thought through that, I was like, oh, okay. The more that we're able to use these braving tools or keys, the better we are able to stand alone and accept who we are and be, be happy with who we are. Okay. Because it's living with a character and living with integrity. Okay. So it's trusting yourself and others, but that takes a lot of vulnerability and courage. So most, a lot of us don't do it all the time because it's, it's hard. It's, it takes a lot of courage. Um, what are your thoughts on like on trust as an important tool to this true belonging because I had a hard time connecting that but maybe for you it was obvious <laughs> you know an obvious connection um, but standing true to yourself and having trust with ourselves and others Does anybody have thoughts on that before we dive into braving here the, the what she meant for trust is self-acceptance right so the, uh -huh. the, in the previous slide she she mentioned that self-acceptance that that yeah. self-acceptance is nothing but a trust so wherever we are whether we are fit or belonging to that place if mm -hmm. we have the self-acceptance like this is what i am this is how i i yeah. live whether i can speak whether i could not able to speak this is what i am this is what i can i can communicate right mm -hmm. so if, if i have that confidence on me i can i can i can live anywhere mm. so you have the confidence of who you are then you can be anywhere. Yeah. So you can be both alone with yourself and be okay with that. <laughs> and you can be with others and, and hold true to who you are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love that. Anybody else have any thoughts? Um, I think it's, it takes courage to belong because uh, when you belong, Uh, you you are challenged and uh, you just need to face challenge when you yeah. belong. Yeah, I think that's I think that's an interesting concept because it's in relation to other people that mm -hmm. it challenges ourselves, right? If we were just alone in the wilderness ourselves, it wouldn't nearly be as challenging as being in relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my marriage. Uh, much more pressing on my maturity than just me being alone, right? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to be mature in the face of my relationship, right? And any relationship we have in our lives. 
kind of pressure that development, pressure that that integrity and that character. Yeah, good point. I love that. All right, good. Okay, so let's go into braving. And like I said, the first the first of them didn't connect as well as like the last three for me, but I'm, you know, jump in and, and share your thoughts with me as if you can are making those connections. So braving is an acronym that she uses to, these are the tools for trust, of building trust with ourselves and others. So the first, who wants to read this first one? I'll have you guys read them. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay, boundaries, you respect my boundaries. And when you are not clear about what's okay and not okay, you ask. You are willing to say no. Mm -hmm. You're willing to say no. Okay. So boundaries. Boundaries. Oh. Hi, Narayan. Hi, Annie. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right. Yeah, welcome. Hello, so the way Thank that we're doing you. this is if you if you want to jump in, you can jump in. If there's like background noise and things, maybe mute your microphone until you're ready to jump in and, and, and say okay, okay. Okay. No problem. So you might uh, you might mute your microphone here just to here I just to keep the the yeah, there you go. Yeah, and anytime you want to jump in, um be sure to do that, okay? All right. Oops, I almost, I accidentally went to the next one. But boundaries, you know, uh, anybody have thoughts on, on these boundaries? It's just kind of respecting, you know, when that other people have boundaries, you have boundaries that if someone crosses your boundaries and just kind of says, you know, does something that maybe you feel uncomfortable with, you're able to communicate and say, you know what, that's, that doesn't work for me and vice versa. Okay. So I'm not fully understand with this word like uh, in yeah. which prospect we can set our boundaries yeah yeah so boundaries is a really complicated topic so it's one of those those areas that even for me i've had to like spend a lot of time thinking about so forgive me if i don't explain it perfectly clear the first time <laughs> Hello, Andy. but um, oh hi thomas hi how are you doing i just uh managed to finish <laughs> For the day's work is so long, hard. <laughs> okay, good. Day. Okay, so here's what I want you to do, Thomas, is go ahead yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. Me see. Just... So go I ahead and uh, we're just going to continue on the conversation. Maybe listen in for a little while until you're kind of up to speed about what we're talking about. And then you can kind of jump in if you have some thoughts, okay? No, I, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to say hi and I go off because I, I have no time. Oh, okay. Thanks for saying hi, Thomas. You can't hear me. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, and it, just to say hi because, uh, can you see me actually? Yeah, I can. Okay. Behind me is my new office in London, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, <laughs> managed to give you a call and say thank you. So I managed to get my new job and this is the only thing that I I don't, I don't know what to, to talk about but I don't, don't want to uh, hold you up a lot of time I have to job up now yeah okay yeah yeah no problem yeah I'm so glad that you're you're able to jump in and say hi and uh, you have a great rest of the day okay thanks Thomas okay cheers Bye. Sorry. All right. Bye. Okay, so getting back to boundaries. So boundaries is just being able to clearly define where I start and you, you know, you begin. And I think that this kind of gets complicated in relationships where sometimes people say and do whatever they want to you and you just accept it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, without being able to say, you know what, that's not okay with me. You know, like and and that doesn't work for me. So as you are able to more clearly kind of define those boundaries for yourself and others, um, there creates more trust there. So you trust others to not violate your boundaries and just kind of overstep where they, you know, maybe, maybe they tell you things that 
hurt your feelings, you know, a lot, or they say things that are maybe destructive to you for you to be able to stand up and say, you know what, I don't appreciate when you talk to me that way. Or, you know, I, I would, I would appreciate if you kind of, you know, were re more respectful to me. Um, yeah, so we should, we have to respect each other boundaries. Yes. For respect. Yeah. Yeah. To build that trust. If we're constantly like overstepping our boundaries with others or or there with us, then we're going to want to steer clear of them, right? Yes. <laughs> we're like, ah, you're not really a safe person, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust you in being able to, to be with you in relationship, okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, we so can, why, we can yeah. apply this word with children that they always want to uh, understand where our, our boundaries and to, you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to pass <laughs> yeah, a little we're... bit more. <laughs> Yes, working with kids, they're always testing your boundaries, right? How much am yeah. I going to be able to get away with without before they stop me, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they always cross their boundaries. Yeah, they cross your boundaries, yep. <laughs> yes. But it's teaching boundaries because, you know, being a boundary person yourself and being able to teach that to children teaches them what appropriate boundaries are for them, too. So, yeah. you know, there's a, there's, it's good to understand boundaries, especially as you're raising kids or dealing, working with kids. It's, it's important when you're working with anyone, let's be honest. <laughs> um, all right, reliability. You do what you say you'll do, okay? And you're honest about what you can and can't do so that you're not over-promising and not following through, okay? So that seems like, you know, if you're reliable, you trust people who do what they say they're going to do. And people can trust you when you when you do what you say you're gonna do. Okay, so that's the level of trust that factors in accountability. So you own your mistakes and apologize and make amends for it. Okay, so accountability. You, you know, we've probably known people who will never take accountability for any mistakes that they make. You know, like mm -hmm. they make made a, make a mistake and then it's blaming or shifting it That's to other way. people, mm -hmm. you know, instead of saying, you know what, I messed up there. That's, you know, and even as sometimes we think as leaders, you know, if, if you're leading groups or even parenting, you know, as parents, we, you know, we shouldn't tell our kids that we made a mistake. <laughs> you know, so, sometimes there's, there's um, some ideas there that to be a leader, we have to be perfect. And what she's saying is, no, that doesn't build trust. What builds trust is being able to say, you know what, I made a mistake there and I'm, I'm truly sorry about that. And how can I make it right? And that that, that builds that character and that integrity. And, um, and we're able to better be true to ourselves and accept ourselves when we have that accountability for ourselves. Anybody have any thoughts on reliability and accountability? Yes, uh, I would like to say something about accountability. Yeah. Uh, actually, we are working, working in a group. So in a group, uh, there will be one leader who will be accountable for all the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about re uh, responsibility or rely, uh, responsibility, it can be shared. Yeah. Okay. But accountability will be will be will be belongs to someone. So mm -hmm. suppose me, if I made some mistake, I should be accountable. Yeah. But if in the group we can share the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that builds trust within that group, right? Yeah. Yeah. We need and about uh, about reliability, mm -hmm. it comes. It depends on you. Uh, people must trust you, so uh, you must be reliable. Yeah. Um, Yep, exactly. Yeah. We, and these are, these are core values, core characteristics that help us be true to ourselves and to, to others. And they really help us belong to others and, our, and to ourselves. because if that trust is being built, then, you know, we are able to be both belong to ourselves and will belong to others because people are trust, they really trust us and who we are. All right, good. Okay, vault is that we don't share information or experiences that are not ours to share. So she talks about how, you know, when we share someone with something with someone and we, we don't want them to go and share it with everyone else because it's not theirs to share. And likewise, when someone comes to us 
and we say, guess what? And we tell them all these things that are not ours to share. What is that other person thinking? Person that you are sharing in this moment? Yeah. If you go and say, guess what? So and so. And start to tell. A person can, it's two things or uh, two kind of person. Uh -huh. uh, one kind of person, of person can think that uh, if you do it with, with, uh, with me, for example, you can share my secrets with others. Yes. Or the second person can think that it's okay, it's, uh, it's uh, nice to have mm -hmm. a, get a, a go gossip, or how called it? Gossip. Like, gossip. Gossip, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. The, the, they, they like it and... Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a way of, it, she calls it kind of faulty connection. Is it like, gossip? It, it's a way of connecting with people, but it's a weak connection because yeah. it's not built on trust. Yes, if anybody yeah. doing something with us, then he can probably do same thing with others. So exactly. we cannot trust on exactly. that person. So it really breaks that trust and it keeps that trust from being as strong as it could be. <laughs> But in short terms, you can think that if he shared with me this in secret information, so he uh, trusts me, like, like oh, you know, yeah. you can uh, by mistake by yeah. these thoughts, but it's uh, for short. Uh, yeah, for, short for some other day, oh. she, can, she or he can also share other information with other person. Yeah, yeah. Was it's kind related of a to short us. win, right? It's kind of short-sighted because you're saying it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to build this trust by telling her things that mm -hmm. I, you know, but in reality, it's, it's breaking trust long-term. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it depends on of the intention. So if somebody uh, did some did uh, some something about some someone, I, I would feel uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. if that person came up to me and said that um, he he has empathy uh, for that person uh, and he yeah. come to me in order to find a solution, yeah, I think it would be great. So yes. I think it, it depends on the of the in, in intention if it's in yeah. order to to help that person or to gossip. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Intention is very important in this situation because if it truly is coming from love and concern um, and just being able to want to help someone, yes, there's certain, you know, certain things that can, that can build trust of just like, okay, this, this, this person is coming with love and concern for this person, not just to gossip. <laughs> so I think you're absolutely right. That, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Integrity and I actually have this, it's the same wording, but integrity is choosing courage over comfort, choosing what's right over what is fun, fast, or easy, and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. Okay, I love this definition of integrity. Because um, I think that our, our, our society doesn't always uh, don't doesn't always em emphasize this it's always there's a lot of fun fast and easy <laughs> in life yeah. you know and and that's promoted more more than anything and that's why with this program I'm like it's it's gonna be hard you know going through and re reworking your habits it's gonna take some time it's going to take effort but what else you know but the things that really matter most and really make the biggest difference in our lives usually are not fun fast and easy you know like they usually take quite a bit of time and effort and work um because it's you know it's doing something that's important anybody have any thoughts on integrity it's not plain sailing <laughs> it's not very exciting i know <laughs> No, but it is true like we never go for the easy path we should check what is right for us mm -hmm. and for long term it is truth for our life yeah exactly yep and that's what's going to be ha bringing that lasting happiness that lasting belonging and acceptance yes mm -hmm. all right good okay non-judgment 
I ask for what I need and ask, and you ask for what you need and we talk about without feeling judgment, okay? So it's just when we go, you know, when we're walking into situations, it's just having a, I'm not gonna judge them or project what I think that they are or that what they're, you know, we think they are or we think that they're thinking, you know, we're not gonna make assumptions, we're not going to judge the worst of them, you know, but we're gonna say, okay, tell me more. Tell me more about it. Let me understand from your point of view. How can this build trust? Is it, is it the For example from the first, yeah, maybe from the first, um, first uh, minute you can't understand the behavior of other person. Mm -hmm. And do you think that you only can see something right now mm -hmm. and uh, to think that it's something not good by doing by him, but after he will explain you why, or you will think why this person did what he did, and um, you can maybe uh, understand better that he doesn't mean to a um, uh, to to violent you or something uh, to do something uh, bad for you like. Uh, or he doesn't think he didn't think about something or he uh, didn't mean and the situation was uh, yeah yeah it's hard to do right <laughs> yeah because of the emotion if yeah. we <laughs> it's very difficult to do the emotion of it is usually very strong you know we kind of go into situations and our brain is wired to just jump into having an explanation about things that we make up instead of truly getting to the heart and understanding the other person. Um, and I think that this one concept, if we truly practice this, and these are all practices, things that we you know, practice doing where nobody's perfect at it, but the more we practice, the more we do build that trust and, um, and love and compassion. Not conclusion in this uh, moment, no, don't, conclu don't uh, yeah. do any conclusion in this specific moment to let person to uh, to to uh, um, explain himself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that um, that's the power of communication, right? Is is really working on the language to the point that we can explain ourselves and we can listen and understand others. And as we as we really get familiar with a language that that ability gets stronger and stronger and that connection and that you know with others gets stronger because we're able to both understand the other person truly understand the other person and that they can understand us so that's the that power of having you know not having those communication barriers is being able to hear each other and and be able to understand coming from a place of non-judgment you know mm -hmm. ideally <laughs> And then generosity is the last one to the extend the most generous interpretation, you know, in their words and actions, just being generous and saying, I, I don't think they intended kind of like Amadou was talking about the intentions of their heart to being able to be generous and thinking their intentions are probably good. I just don't understand exactly. And being generous in the way that we see others. Okay. So these are the tools for the wilderness. This is how we can both belong to ourselves and belong to other people and, you know, truly belong with other people. Um, so just for sake of time, I do have to stop at the, the, the top of the hour, but she, she talks a lot about our world and how divisive, you know, we are in our, in, in society and kind of this, this um, tendency for us to divide out into different groups and say, whether you're either with us or you're against us, instead of having these conversations, of saying, okay, tell me how you believe. And even if we don't have the same opinion, still being able to hear people and be able to have that non-judgment, that generosity. And even if it's something so extreme that you feel like they're so you know, wrong, <laughs> still being able to have that, that discourse between us that is kind and generous. Um, and so having this, you know, braving and being, practicing these tools of the wilderness and accepting ourselves and being able to accept others really helps us stay true to ourselves even in these conversations that are difficult with other people 
and 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 being able to have conversations even if we don't necessarily agree with the other person okay will someone read this for us could i read uh, yeah who who's has anybody who hasn't what's uh, i would like to read okay <laughs> go ahead unity uh spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us and that's our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion mm -hmm. yeah. all right good anybody have some thoughts on this kind of the the concept here is basically if we if we really looked at it and say okay how are we connected how do we all belong to each other and it's you know there's a there's just kind of this the power of love and compassion if we go into you know we go into our relationships with more of this focus of love and compassion it really does unite us it does connect us in a way that if we go in with you know, divisiveness and they're either with us or against us and we have that divide, um, we're really not going to get to a good place um, with, with them or with ourselves. Um, so what she's really emphasizing in this book is just being able to come, go about our life and our, our relationships and our interactions and our communications with others grounded in this love and compassion. And that's practiced through braving. <laughs> that's practiced through braving. Because I don't think it tends to come, you know, very natural for most of us. Um, but as we practice that, then as a whole, we can be more and more united. Um, and she, she also has this concept of people are hard to hate. Um, hate close up, move closer. <laughs> Um, and that's that concept of when we really look to understand people, we, we, we see them, we ask questions, we know them more. My, my mom always said, um, the, more you know, the more you know someone, the more you're going to love them. And basically, the more you get to know why they are the way they are and how they, ha how they came to be, the more we're going to love and more we're going to have that compassion. So it's easy like on online chats or something like that where we're disconnected to be like, oh, they're wrong, they're a horrible person. <laughs> or, you know, that, that leader or that person is horrible. Um, I hate them, you know, and kind of have that opinion about them. But the more we get closer, the more we understand each other close up, the more connected we can be because the more love and compassion, the more room there is for love and compassion. And we, we want the same for ourselves, right? We don't want others to be judging us from afar without really knowing us, right? We, we want that generosity. We want that non-judgment for ourselves. And so it's kind of what can we, how can we give that to others? Anybody have any ideas with that or thoughts on that? I think that... Uh, I think that our community here at Pronunciation Pro is much, much better than, the, you know, as a group with this, because there's so much love, there's so much compassion, there's so much like, everyone's being vulnerable, everyone's being kind of open and honest, and, and, uh, and I think that there, there is this, this connection that is there that, um, at least, you know, the connection that I feel with, with our students is that there's a lot of non-judgment <laughs> going on. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to end with this. With this, um, there's this quote here. Um, let's see. Does anybody want to read this for us? We have kind of two pages, so I'll have two volunteers here. I can. All you... right, Victoria, go ahead. <laughs> True belonging. Belonging. Stop walking uh, through the world looking for confirmation that you don't belong. You will always find it because you've made that your mission. Stop uh, scoring people's faces for evidence that you are not enough. You will always find it because you've made that 
your goal. Mm -hmm. So this kind of comes back to that self acceptance is that we're, if we're constantly looking around saying, okay, I'm looking for confirmation. I'm looking for reasons why I don't belong in this place or with the, you know, belong here or why I don't fit in or why I'm not enough. That's what we're going to find. That's what, you know, cause that's what we're on the hunt to find. You can read this next one for us. May I read? Yeah, go ahead, idea. Okay. Uh, true belonging and self-worth are not goods. We don't negotiate their value with the world. The truth about who we are live in our care helps. Our call to courage is to protect our wild care against constant evaluation, especially our own. No one belongs here more than you. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, that true belonging, that self-worth, it's not something that other people can negotiate or it's not up to other people. It's not their business. <laughs> it's, it's found in our own hearts. It's, you know, our, our call, to a, call to courage is to protect that, to decide, you know, really determine who we are and how we're going to live our lives and being true to that and true to our values and not constantly evaluating ourselves in terms of our own worth or whether we belong or not, but, but being able to decide for ourselves our, our worth and that, and that you know we do belong. We belong to ourselves and we can belong to others um, as we have that true sense of self, okay? So this is a, these these concepts from this book really really interesting. Um, let's uh, here. Let me kind of go back to here, real quick. I do have to jump into another meeting here, but um, I want to hear your takeaways here. So let's just go down. Idea, what's your takeaway from today's discussion? So whether whether you can communicate with them or if you're not able to communicate with them if you're living in the if you are living in one place, mm -hmm. don't bother about the place or something like that. You just start loving them. So yeah. that love will come with the spirituality. If you have a spirituality, uh, the, the love will come, right? So, so if you want to fit, the, fit in that place, you start loving them, actually. Yeah, so, that it really that, with that love. Good, I like that, Kalyan. Yeah, that's what makes sense. That's what my takeaway. Okay, is. great. All right, what, who, who's next? I took uh, this, uh, your word that you say that uh, progress is a good every time I uh, uh, learn something new, but uh, love who you are in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like you want to, uh, to uh, 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 reach something, but don't forget for, to, uh, to love yourself now. <laughs> Yeah, we always think, well, I'll, I'll feel good about myself when I achieve this, you yeah. know, achieve this goal and it's like, yeah. no, I should love myself now and it'll actually be more motivating to achieve that goal coming from a place of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ooh, I love that. All right, Vanna, you have a takeaway? Yes, so we should start accepting ourselves as we are and also we should do things which are right for us not we have to go for easy steps so mm -hmm. yeah don't yes. take yeah do the right thing not just the easy thing yeah 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 i love that i'm gonna do it yeah oh go ahead and also do not trust like who is uh, go gossiping with us of others things so yeah you should take time to make trust on others yeah that it's worth the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amadou, what are your takeaways from today? Mm, my takeaway is uh, it takes a lot of courage to be to stand up to be ourselves, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that uh, intention is important, as I said. And um, even if we are not perfect, so mm -hmm. as long as uh, our heart, uh, as you say in English, and uh, I love this in John. Um, as long as your heart is in the right place, I, I think it's uh, yeah, exactly. The most important. Yep. Good, excellent. Yes. Yep, it's the intent of our heart that matters the most. All right, yes. idea. Exactly. Yeah, um, I think that the most important thing is the 
keep in mind that the all person are different mm -hmm. and you need to uh, respect the other person how they think how they uh, um, make a behavior mm -hmm. at the same time you need to clear you have boundaries and the other have boundaries as well mm -hmm. this, this way you try to respect the other person and you can make a take a communication of you share um, sometimes a different situation mm -hmm. at the same time you can uh, interact with other person mm -hmm. and don't uh, make them uh, feel bad the other person yeah absolutely all right good and then i think so man we didn't hear from you today but uh do you have any some thoughts Maybe it's not quite working. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you so much for your participation today and come and share your thoughts. And hopefully it was a good discussion for you. You learned some good things. You were able to practice some English and, um, and I'm glad you're able to come today. So thank you for attending and you have a good rest uh, of the day. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, here, hold on. Yes, so much. just to get started. Yes, uh, what is the next book for the next uh, book club? <laughs> Good question. I don't know yet. So I haven't decided. <laughs> but if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear it. So just email me those, okay? I actually I have a recommendation. Okay. How to create the how to create TV series from the in internet from Ross Brown. Okay. Go ahead and email me that book and we'll kind of take a look at it, okay? Okay, I'm going to email that. Thank okay. you very much. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much, guys. All right. I have Thank to go. I, I'm so glad I got to hang out with you guys today. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.